let's look at entities attributes and entity sets okay how how do you define uh, the relationships in entity relationship diagram representation okay so an entity is represented with a square so that could be say an employee okay it can have its attributes or whatever salary or something okay there could be another entity here and it will have its own attributes okay uh, the way the book shows is it has a department id so the primary key is always underlined in this and these two entities are then related through a relation which is represented in a diamond with a diamond so you can think of this as works in or some kind of a relationship okay so this is this is the basic most important representation that you have for entity relationship diagrams okay now you can have so this is now a relationship in which this this entity is this relation is joining two entities okay now this relation itself can have its own attribute okay something like since okay so this person has been working in this department since uh, so if we if we think of the other uh, defining term is what is the degree of this relation so because it is joining two entities it is a binary and degree is 2 uh, mm -hmm. on the, the since you can, mm -hmm. you can see how these other attributes easily map to being columns in tables mm -hmm. where would the what what would be the case in terms of since that so now this this relation itself is also a table mm -hmm. and this one of the columns is going to be since mm -hmm. so this is and what mm -hmm. i'll it's always going to be a separate table yeah you can actually so not always now let me just rephrase that mm -hmm. because you can you can actually move the attributes here into something else depending on what kind of relationship you have since could be stored in employee absolutely depending on so it is it is again uh, depending on the type of constraints you have you may be able to move an attribute around or whichever way it is okay mm -hmm. but this will be a table okay so if this was something like we have another one uh department say company to or something some other uh, entity that this relation joins so then it will become ternary or three okay so this is this is the whole concept of entity relationship diagrams Okay, representing the relations and attributes and uh, entities in a pictorial format okay so you can think of it more clearly okay so now the term value set for so this is now an entity and a group of entities similar entities is called an entity set okay so if you think of an employee entity set here say so let's put it here and then you will have e1 e2 e3 are the instances here okay but because they all have the same attributes they can be grouped together to actually make an entity set okay so each employee becomes an instance of this entity set okay let's see what was the other one that i looked at 
Okay. So next is what kind of constraints make make up a relationship. So there is one is cardinality ratio is that you can have an employee working in one department or a manager. So you can have a card say a manager can actually have multiple departments then he could manage right so this would have one to n cardinality but you could have uh, if you go the say a department and an employee say so let us go back and say an employee instead of manager let's make it employee is working in this department and here you can have the employees here right so this would give you a different cardinality or you could have so you could have cardinalities of the form like 1 to n uh, n to m to n where you totally open it up like a manager can do as many departments he wants to do and each department can have as many managers so you can have uh, uh, or you could have one to one. One manager can only do one uh, department and department can also have something like this. The so second is participation that defines. So this is one attribute is actually the cardinality of the relation. Second is take an example of uh, the book gives an example of insurance policy or let us think of an example of uh, yeah that is that is actually a good example we'll stick to that and so there is say an employee there is a company here I'll draw it like this I'll just erase this one and give you the Again, our employee, but now this relation is, say, insurance policy. Okay, and then there are dependents who can benefit from this insurance policy. Okay, now what is going to happen is that these dependents can have their, say, names. Where is the name here? and say age that is the example that book takes and here is the cost okay and here is this is policy so now what is going to happen is till till there is an employee working in some department here so we have our tree on this side if there is no employee, then this is, this can't exist. Right? So this is a constraint, existential constraint. Okay? So now what you are seeing is that this, so if we say, so you can call it as total dependency. or existential dependency okay then what you see the next thing that we see here is now this entity the dependence can they be identified? What I'm trying to think is, will that be? So when we are identifying, okay, yes. So now this person, this dependent's name has to be combined with the primary key of this employee for it to be unique, right? Because they could have twins with same name, uh, dif same age, but different names. I mean, hopefully they'll change the names at least. So, <laughs> so 
in that case what happens is so what you do is now this is becoming a partial key because without this SSN primary key of the employee this guy can't be uniquely identified okay so a partial key is represented with a dotted line underneath okay Why? I don't know. I mean, the key is to the open cycle, or, you know, it provides a function. I don't know. I'm just... Oh, okay. <laughs> the term doesn't make sense, or? I, I don't know. I mean, you can see what a primary key is. You can see what a foreign key is. I don't really understand what a partial key is. It's, it's a kind of way of saying if you were to put a primary key in this table, the primary key would be on the employee ID. And, and the... Uh, that make sense? Think of it as a composite. You wouldn't find one in isolation. Right, but this isn't. This is, this is a way of kind of showing attributes and their relations. It's okay. Not, okay. It's just a different kind of schema. Right. So it's like the SSM would be a partial key with respect to the dependent, right? I mean, the union of the SSM and the name is the primary key for the. The composite key of the two is actually the primary key for. Right. Right. With respect to the the kid. Is that parts and that's one part. Right. Yeah. Is that okay? The other so this this is how you can represent uh, uh, entities where there is existential dependency on something else. Okay. One more thing that you have to look at is actually a relationship called is a relationship so so it is what is the spelling of hi h i e hierarchical yes. is that correct mm -hmm. oh. okay hierarchical relationship and uh, in this if if Alex was not taping, I would tell something, but I can't. <laughs> no, it's fine. <laughs> okay. So, uh, so is a relationship can be. So let us think of it. It is by itself quite explanatory, but uh, let us think of it as when you say. A is a type B. Type A is a type B. That means you end up encapsulating at least one of the two into the other one. Right? It is almost, it becomes, is, a, is an instance of, I mean, by talking about it. So what you can think of is that, say we had that employee, so it gives you two examples. Let me just write the one that is with the employee. has its own attributes and then let's define so this notation with the boxes and triangles and circles are standard is it correspond in any meaningful way to how those terms are used in normal flow charts I I'm sorry I can't answer that I can check it but has anybody here used normal flowchart? I have never actually used flowcharts. Yeah. Is it same? It doesn't look to be the same with the normal. Diangles. Uh, like from Visio or something? Is that yeah. what you're talking about? Yeah. I mean, diamonds normally represent decision points, but you've had a diamond there linking. Yeah, the that's the There's relation. no conditionality in it. A diamond normally represents conditionality, as I've seen. This system is in the SNL. Huh? This system is in the Visio. Okay. So probably when you use ERD, you use Visio to make ERDs, it will give you these yeah. these choices. It doesn't give you so. the trend, but it gives you the other one. Oh, okay. Well, he has done so much. Great. <laughs> uh, hey, can you have two entities next to each other? You always need some other symbolic things. Uh, what do you mean by that? Like having two boxes connected without having a triangle or a diamond. Some, how are they then related? There has to be some. There has to be some, some defining part that will tell you why they are related, right? That is the whole idea about. Uh, 
creating down, breaking down. So uh, if that is the case, then why are they not just one table? What I'm trying to think is that, yeah, right, exactly. <coughs> Okay. Oh, that is that is very different. That is very different. Yeah, but I, you know, it all depends on what you are talking about, right? So, in object oriented, what you want to do is what what does object? -oriented, I won't get distracted too much, but what I'll we can actually go into. There are again two parts. There is object oriented databases, and then there is object oriented programming is totally different. Okay. So, you the database itself enables you to define objects. But we can we can devote a chapter on or lecture on it that what are the recent changes that are happening in the we can devote some time on it. But don't get confused here. Okay. Yeah. This is just a basic representation of I think just the term object is used so much is what will start making you think like that. Right. But we can, will what we can do is it is like either we can have a recitation on object oriented databases i can give you guys something to read and we can then discuss it a research paper on how things are being done in that okay. but keep yes okay. just this is just a very simple and what you are seeing is that all it is doing is trying to simplify and make representation pictorial okay. that is all the object here is but you want to still use certain standard notations so somebody else can understand it that is all the ISA doesn't become a relation, doesn't become a paper. ISA, let us think. So what you did was you took this, I'm trying to think, how will it inherit all the attributes of, because now this, this employee has to inherit everything from this employee in addition to this attribute of say whatever is hourly wage or whatever they use so if we if we do that i'm trying to think how will we semantically represent these tables sometimes it would be done all in a big table but with some columns that are left empty when they don't apply. Um. I would think something else. You know, I would think, okay, first question is about is a, I don't think is a is going to be a table, okay? But the second question is about how we'll think about it doing this. Uh, yeah, you'll have to have a a master table. How else would you do it? Can't you just have a manager table and then an employee table? Just income? Your managers and employees? No, uh, that is different. But this is a, an an employee. You can say that there is a there is a table employees where every all the employees are there. Then suddenly you find that you end up hiring uh, temporary employees. Mm. They have this extra field. Oh, well, then instead of, you have a temporary employee table. Yeah, some, yeah. It doesn't depend on the number. I'm sorry. Would there be a, a design problem with having something like an employee table and then a column like uh, employee type and then have, have each employee type correspond to, like have an hourly employee type to correspond to a table holding data only for hourly Okay, so data. what you do is you end up, okay, so let us think of it as a new column which will have the values corresponding to either he's say full time or he is uh, yeah, so basically you know what maybe that is what will be an is a table that is an interesting thing because that actually what it is telling you is that from this is a table you can actually go either to employees table but no how will how will the uh, hourly employee Inherit all the attributes. It would just be a separate table with a foreign key tied to the employee ID. 
No, but that means uh, okay. So and you'll stuff everything. And then have a foreign key referencing to yeah. That 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 is that is right. And given that, I don't. Do, do these diagrams really help you? <laughs> 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 you got to set up the tables, right? Huh? Yeah. You have to set up the tables, and it seems like just as challenging to do it with or without the diagram. In my experience, why where it has helped me a lot is when say I am starting to work on some some existing module. If I can see an ERD rather than going into the schema and finding out what are the different tables, who's talking, it just gives a huge. I can speak from experience on that. So Tony came up with this big complicated table set of our project. I looked at all the tables. Finally, I, I made my own kind of version of a, a thing like this with all these arrows going. And then I could understand. It. And it is it is easier to maintain that way. It is really easier. It is so. What you will see is that it. Uh, it just gives you uh, another layer of abstraction to view it. Well, that's, I think that's why it's useful, actually, because yeah. I mean, the tables become so convoluted in order to engineer these relationships that actually teasing this back out from the tables is hard. Mm -hmm. So it helps, it helps you to keep clear what you're trying to achieve in, in your table structure. But, but it seems kind of to be an art then to come from this representation to the actual table. I'll just give you one quick example. It is quite, it is not, I wouldn't say it hard, or you said art? Art. Oh, okay. Art, art. okay. Uh, there might be many different ways to do it. It probably depends on what kind of data you're putting in in the end and what kind of query. No, I think it doesn't change that much, except it changes if you, as long as you know where the constraints are, if they are well defined in your ERD, you'll be very close to this implementation because you would have thought about a lot of things while you're writing this up. So could we take this specific example then of the hourly employee thing? We were taught um, before that the question of whether you would, for example, just stick a couple of extra columns in one employee table and say hourly rate, et cetera, et cetera, to deal with that <coughs> case or not, or whether you would break it out into separate tables simply depended We'll come on optimization, on, on normalization. Yeah. Exactly. That is where we will come to. We'll, okay, we'll so start question, talking about redundancy and. Uh, okay, so yeah. my question is would you have several possible data structure implementations of one diagram like that? Say it again? Well, if, um, if you had. Um, oh, you. Had okay. Different kinds of employee and no one employee type represented more than 10% of the workforce. Mm -hmm you would represent that in a data structure with lots of different tables. Right. Um, if, if you had 98% the same and only 2% different, you might simply sling a couple of extra fields in one table. Stick it in there. Different them. data structures. Would those different data structures be different than that of this diagram? Would they be two different diagrams? They'll be different diagrams because you'll every, what you'll have to then identify is whichever way you break it. You'll have to because then you'll be identifying attributes Related to because there'll be a reason for you to actually break it, okay. right? So you would be able to identify. Right. So there's a strict one-to-one -one relationship between a diagram and a data structure. Once you, yeah, once you have converged on what you, again, from the point that we had that you could actually move something into, uh, say, an attribute into something else, like about the manager sense or something like this. But once you have converged on it, the idea is actually right. it should have a direct correspondence. Into a table, yeah. yeah. And all that can use the columns. So if you have your diagram there, so but, but I thought kind, kind of the point was this thing that you didn't really know how, you didn't know to do this diagram, you didn't know, need to know exactly how many employees you had and how many hours of work and so forth. But that seems to be, you're saying that's essential to know that because the diagram is depend on that. No, but the other thing is, okay, if you don't know, the question is whether you know it or not, don't know it before you start, is that the... Yeah. So if you don't know, it is it is the same problem. When you are even implementing your system directly, you still maybe keep on refining it 
when as you know things right but what you will do is so i should just maybe i have not clarified this actually supplements all your data model that is all it does it is it is actually something that you can give it to your your group mate to actually look at it and come up much more quickly or think about your data model this will make you look at your data model in a visual perspective is that but i don't think it's true that there's only one table structure possible for anyone who's given diagrams and i, and I think the, John, the example that john came up with was was a good one just looking at this thing right here you could either put the hourly wage field and i assume there's also a salary field. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you just create those as two columns in the employee table and have sort of a toggle field you know sort of type field right mm -hmm. or you could put them in separate tables like both of those would be perfectly reasonable ways to engineer this the decision as to which route which way to go is going to be something like john said you know, the percentage of people in one in one way or another that is true but if so that exactly was right but the thing is if you implement if you draw your corresponding erd right. in this way then you should actually keep it consistent don't if you actually show it here and you implement hourly wage here add as a separate call a another column in this mm -hmm. then you should move this up there that is all i meant to say you can do the same thing in whatever optimal situation you are in mm -hmm. and this will change the way you said that this will go in here but then don't keep the erd like this mm -hmm. that is all consistent. stay consistent so somebody else can because if i look but, at this but, erd but, but i'm saying mm -hmm. that you know we have one employee table right, yeah. which has three fields a type field and then depending on what the type selection is either an hourly employee or a salary okay and we're going to put some sort of constraint in there probably a check or some sort of a trigger to make sure that you can't be both you can't both have an hourly wage and and a regular employee like that. so the is a relationship you know the way that this thing is drawn right here is a way of saying that an employee is either an hourly employee or is a salary employee right um so i may implement it all in one table but if i move the, that bottom information up to be you know, to just be sort of attribute fields coming out of the employee, I lose a central, you know, part of the, the sort of the, the data logic of the application, which is that you can't be both, even though I've implemented it all in one table. So I would argue that you should keep the, the structure this way, even if you implement it in one table, because what you're trying to express here is a logical difference between two different types of employees. I'll, I want to correct you on one thing. Yeah, right. yeah it's... You don't split the employees into these... Exactly. Two. These are not the only two ways. You know what? What is what I? Let me just okay. Let me just answer, uh, and I'll just actually it is clarification of the point you raised. One is if you actually read the book also, whenever you talk about is a relationship, it is very subjective, right. very subjective, and it will even point it out intuitively everywhere. It will say, is he is is every employee an hourly wage? Intuitively not. right because but it may be the case so what i want to say is that just make sure it absolutely you can move it up but just make sure when you implement it if your field is actually off a part of the employee table then show it as an attribute here that is all it is absolutely fine to implement in the way you find because every situation is different whether it is 90% in it or 10% in following this structure but you lose there just the logic that you can't be both hourly and uh and salaried which is something that's captured nicely by this notation so this, this diagram is an implementation diagram this is not necessarily a logic thing it tells you how many tables you need and what attributes you're sticking to each of the tables so if you decide that you can be only one or the other kind of employee you don't need that to implement the system you just need a boolean you you'll just need a check constraint that you can be both that wouldn't come here this is not indicating that you can be only an hourly employee or the other type what it just indicates is that all hourly employees are employees all the other sub type of employees are employees and hence you can reduce the amount of data storage by creating three tables instead of one table with a lot of columns Sure. I guess I'm, I guess I object on principle then. Um, this is an implementation <laughs> representation. This is not necessarily a logical representation. 
But I think it's I think it's value is as a logical representation. Its value is at the point of coming up with, you know, when you're sitting down with a client and you're trying to, to find out from them how should how should I represent people? Is an hourly employee the same as a salaried employee? Can someone be both? And they come back to you and they say, no, someone can't be both. Mm -hmm. Well, I can implement that in one table, right? But I also want to make sure that I have somewhere sketched out for myself the, the logic, you know, that sort of that, that makes it clear where there are overlaps between sets in the database and where there aren't. Right, so I think you know I I feel like there's a value to having all three of those boxes and this little is a Let, triangle okay. to put the thing into one. Okay. I'll I'll just I'll j I hope I think what he uh, mentioned is very important thing to take is all it is this representation is telling you is this employee is going to inherit all these attributes right. and this. Mm -hmm. Okay, now how you actually include it in the table whether you want to keep it depending again on your situation right. so this is this is giving you a very logical understanding right here mm -hmm. it is fundamentally it is assisting you you would now you okay let us think of this as just put an hourly wage here okay, okay? just this change mm -hmm. will suddenly make you think very differently about your system because here you suddenly started thinking about, okay, there may be another type of employee which will inherit everything and this, right? But here, if you just saw this one, you won't get that feeling. So what I want to, no. Yeah, I mean that's that's exactly that's exactly it. So so what I'm saying is that if we have one employees table, mm -hmm. right, and there's a type, an employee type, it's a it's a toggle in the mm -hmm. table itself, right? Depending on how the thing toggles, you inherit differently. Right, you can't you can't have in the employee you know have it set to employee type as salary and also have a value in hourly wage. So that column is effectively cut off. It's going to be null for that type of an employee. So, which is which is the whole reason. It's it's a way of saying that yes, you know, all of your records and employees they have you know name, address, zip code, all that stuff. And then based on it's it's, it's entirely just an engineering implementation based on the way that a, a type field is set. Either one of these columns is going to be active. That is to say, the employee is going to sort of inherit and be able to, to have a value in there, or the other is going to be active. And all I'm trying to make the, the only point I'm trying to make is that you can have one of these diagrams which is logically consistent and still implement it with a different number of tables or different yeah. structures, yeah. right? And that's and that's I'm just I'm just trying to make that point because folks have asked, is there a one-to-one -one correspondence between the way that these diagrams logically present you know the differences in your data types and how you implement the stuff and I, then, I think it's obvious that there isn't you can implement things in a lot of different ways why why would you not then change your uh, ERD to correspond to your implementation the question well, is it doesn't mm, correspond well, to no what I'm saying is if if I look at the representation like this right the, the question is, would be in the case that the hourly wage was entered and there was a flag in there was a flag in one employee table. How you would represent that? In, how would you represent the constraint visually in this diagram if they're all fields in the table, but some of them are only going to get filled dependent on what the values are in other, other fields in the same table? Okay, so what you are saying is that if if there was an hourly wage here, then you'll have another. That what is the wage? No, well, the no because what is? More, I think I think the more the more the, the, the issue would be like so employee type. They're all attributes sitting off that table. You've got employee type now. Hourly wage and hourly wage Where, will, you'll make depend, will depend on whether it'll be null, whether it'll be null or some value. So that means you have hourly wage here and a wage here, which will draw a value when if this is toggled to true. Then this will have it can't have a null value, right? So okay. these these are the things right. that you'll. So how would you so represent that? That's the question. How would you represent that in the visual diagram if they're all sitting as attributes of the same box? So what you're trying, what we're trying to say is that there's a. How would you represent that constraint? It is a constraint. So the question is how you visually represent it. I think is what you're. Right, and, and I'm saying that it makes perfect sense to visually represent it using this kind of little is a branch, right? Let me you think. Know, how for, would for basic you? engineering reasons, you might want to have the whole thing in one table, right? But is a can allow overlap. It doesn't necessarily mean an employee doesn't have both. Or right. They're, they're sort of unclear. You know, this is. Point out that ambiguity in the book. Yeah. And I would and I would say that the way to, to represent exactly that point is to, you know, if, if it's an either or, I would draw them both from the same ISA. Uh -huh. And if it's also true, like an employee can also be, uh, you know, 
birthday pal or something. You could have another another line coming off in another is a box as a way of saying that you can be both, you know, an hourly wage employee. I, I think that that would, that would make that clear. I'm actually thinking about how would you represent this relationship. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we are talking about an attribute having an attribute. Yes. Okay, so then this will have to be converted into a object so that it can have an attribute. Right. Okay, and then they will have existential relationship between the two. Because if this doesn't exist, this doesn't exist. So that, but that's kind of what, what we have. Then. I mean, we have. Yeah, no, I, I agree. What I'm saying is, I was thinking about how actually to think about if we move these up there, mm -hmm. how would we think of it in representing it? Okay. So, so now let's come back to your question in terms of. So my, uh, I'll tell you my my bias. My bias is that if my visual representation does not actually tell me how it is being represent, being implemented. I have, I mean, I would try to avoid it. If in any form, I mean, if possible, I would rather try to do this if I am doing this implementation, mm -hmm. than actually coming back logically from this again. Can't you simply draw a line between the two and write along the line? What I'm sorry? Is it just that when you see a square in one of these diagrams, you want it to be a table? There will be a table, yes. There will be a table. Okay, whereas tree usually again is more of a logical depth of semantics. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, so a, it's a way... It's a table or it cannot be a table. It's just, it means right. something. And it's so a way of explaining, like, when someone when someone's coming to the thing and sees, like, oh, you know, Kevin has built this table that has these two fields and there, you know, there's this type field and, you know, half of the, the fields are null for half the records and... The others, and there's this check constraint in there. Why is that there? It's a way of saying, well, this this is a logical, you know, this is a physical implementation of this logical relationship. Is that part of this notation that an uh, entity represents a table, a square represents a table? Yeah. Okay. So, so it, in that case, we won't be able to. That this is the only correct implementation of this, whatever. Representation, basically. But there's right. obviously some value to. But it, but it then, but I mean, you know, I mean, essentially what you're, what you're saying, Ravi, is that if we took these two, you know, there's there's an hourly wage and a wage fee, mm -hmm, right, that comes, yeah. that's coming up in those two bottom boxes, yeah. and you sort of made the point that if you take them up there and create a relationship between them and, and a third field, which is toggle, that you're actually just creating new entities, and so you're, so I mean, what you've essentially said is that okay, well, if we put this all into one table in this diagram, then we have to sort of move these fields back up here to the top, but because of this logic, they branch back out into, into that is how how I am understanding because we are we are talking about trying to set attributes to attributes right that is what we are trying to because one which is exactly what this thing represents I, I just I take issue with the idea that one entity relates to one table directly I mean I don't think that they make I one representation one different representation different you mean so. one representation uh, leads to one implementation that is what you're saying right like because logically right. they are they are coming to the same thing, but you could implement in different ways. Right, and yeah, okay. you might implement it in different ways, just depending on all sorts of the engineering constraints. Yes, sort of you, break up of your yes, you can. My my all I wanted to say, if possible, mm -hmm. and if you can represent the ER diagram in the way that you are implementing, it would be better. That's all. If that field actually is being implemented in a different table. Then show that in the ER diagram also. That's all. Is that I okay? Do it that way. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> just doesn't, just doesn't make sense. When you have the inheritance diagrams, just, the hourly, wage, the hourly the worker, the part-time worker can't inherit the salary field, right? No. So it's not, so, well, that's not indicated in the diagram. Though, Which one? Can you say it again? Yeah. You have the part-time worker, and his he's an, an employee, so he <laughs> inherits all the attributes of employee. But he can't inherit the salary of the employee, right? so he doesn't inherit everything. So salary may not be a field of that. That's a different. Oh, how would? No, would salary may not be a part of it. It may be a part of some other information. What I want to say is that all the so you will implement this in a way because it has to inherit. It may inherit social security number, address, and all those things, which are actually common. 
Well, I just thought that would be done in the implementation, you know, in the commands that can, the SQL commands that calculated the salary and stuff, but not in the EID diagram. I'm confused what your question was. I don't know if you put that. Well, where would you put salary? I mean, you'd have to have it, it's got to be in a field with every employee, right? Well, not for hourly workers, they don't have salary. Yeah, presumably you'd also have an ISA relationship with a salary worker. That would be the other branch of the ISA, would be the salary workers. Because you can still have contract workers. That was the thing, you know, it is, there'll be a lot of different types. It is, it is like somebody, the other example that is about like motor boats or something like that or whatever it is. It's not exhaustive. You just put the basic stuff in the employee framework and then the salary should be exposed. So you'll, if you want to implement something where you will have like this, you would have to keep the things which are common here. Yeah. Right, that's all. Okay. So when you are, so after this is when you will, you will actually make sure that you have normalized, you are, you don't have data redundancy and so that is what, is that the next chapter? I think that is the next chapter. Would those rules knock out this one big table with the different kinds of rules in it? It may. You'll have to make sure that you do the normalization. Okay. Okay. So, now what, the other thing that they talk about is what kind of, so these are, so there is this hourly wage and then there is the example that they give is the contract worker. There's another type of a employee. And so this guy will have its contract ID here. Okay. Now, what they say is, if you, if you want to actually understand the relationship, you want to check, do these overlap? Can one of this be one of this? Okay, so they don't overlap. Okay, a contract ID, contract worker is not an hourly wager. Okay, so they don't have an overlapping constraint that is being used. But if, if you have another type of employee, say is a, say another one says, so senior employee, senior employee is somebody who could be a decision maker. That is all his attribute is or something that that a contract worker, worker can come in and actually become a project manager for some time or have the role of, so it has to have all the attributes of this to be able to be one, like have the same attributes. So then you have overlapping constraints. Okay. It's, it's still, that is why I'm telling you it is very, very subjective. It's really subjective and because this representation, same thing, there could be another one of regular employee or something. So when you are thinking about these, just think of them that does intuitively it makes sense to you and that is where it, it becomes very subjective. But, uh, so, so I missed the point, so overlapping constraints is not bad. Is it? I'm sorry? Overlapping constraints, that's not, that's not a bad thing. Overlapping constraints. It's it's more of telling you the relationship between two different entities. You are not actually constraining one to be the other, but you are when you are designing your system, you are allowing that this contract ID actually can have the same. Now that is that is what is redundancy if you think of. You know why would you have that? but because this guy is a contract worker. So again, it all depends on the situation. It's, it's very subjective. I really do not want to talk about it more because it's, it's so, can, can, can I borrow somebody's book? I actually want to this, let me see.
they also make the distinct point that you have this diagram that has three different boxes and that you can translate it either into three tables or two tables. Yeah. So I mean, right there, they make the point that you don't have to have a one-to-one -one correspondence between boxes and tables. You can't. No. Well, I don't say to redraw the diagram. I say to redraw the <laughs> yeah, yeah, tell me. Exactly. No, that's that's a valid discussion point. Sort of conceptual point. Yes. Experience of having designed a million of these things, which is that you know sometimes the, the kinds of relationships that you're trying to express here are not captured very well by sort of counting the number of tables. We're trying to sort of you know look at the table structure and sort of tease out and see exactly what's going on because you can have all kinds of logic that's either built into the table itself or built into the front end that you know that sort of draws these kinds of distinctions. So I think that there's a real value in drawing the distinctions out in something like an ER diagram, right, and making it sort of explicitly clear where where sets of things in the database overlap and where they don't, regardless of whether they're stored in the same table or stored in different tables. I agree with that point, but I still okay. <laughs> it's it's I think it is a preference issue. It's sure. it's a preference issue because we were when we were writing up the modules that we worked on, for us it was very important that when you are doing it, the person should actually know that which place to look for this attribute, I can go get it. You know something. I if I put it here and it is actually a part of this column, okay, I where would be my first chance to look for it? I'll go into the schema. Where would I look for it? Well, you'd probably look for an hourly wage table. And you wouldn't you find won't find it. Right. So then you'd go and look at the employee's table. I agree. No. What, what I'm saying is, oh, I fully agree. But if this was 10, 10 lines buried deep down, what will you do then? So all I'm saying is, I absolutely agree. I mean, you can represent and actually break it out so that it is much more clear what is being inherited by what. Okay, that, that is where the overlap is. But I would still personally put it where I am actually adding it, if I can. That's all. Yeah, I mean, I guess I'd say if it was 10 lines down, then the value of actually making it explicit and teasing it out becomes even greater, in, in my opinion. So. Okay. <laughs> okay. Shall we continue? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. So let's actually do one example to look at Translation, I think that is where the most important thing we want to get at is. I have one more question about the ISA. The fact mm -hmm. that there are these cross constraints, does that. Cross constraints? I mean, the, the uh, foreign keys, in effect. Well, I'm just, I'm just trying to figure out does the kind of the strict inheritance idea really, does it break down with that, uh, at all? Hourly worker inherits, seems to inherit everything from the employees. Mm -hmm. But there are other constraints that kind of go outside that relationship. Then the kind of the strict inheritance idea breaks down. Is that kind of. By, by inheritance, what you mean is it'll have something like if. Okay, let us think that it has a foreign key that points here, right? right? So now, what is the next question? Now you tell me. What if it has a foreign key that points somewhere else, or, um, outside this table entirely? Uh huh. What would it break down? There should be able to be multiple inheritance. That would be what that would be. The hourly worker might have a is a relationship as an employee and also an is a relationship as a union member. Mm -hmm. um, so why? What would? I guess that doesn't, that doesn't do anything. Mm -hmm. Damage to the side of this diagram. Yeah, you just have your You'll name. just draw another uh, relation. Square. Member of could be another relation member or something. Does so that answer? It's definitely not strict inheritance and kind of like an entrepreneurial approach, in a sense, right? Right, right. You know, because the same, the same employee. Could be. As you couldn't have, like, you know, an hourly worker and a senior employee both 
being same. the same literal equivalent. Yeah. Those would be two separate objects. Whereas, whereas here you can, right? Can you have entities connected without a relationship between them? That is what we just uh, talked about. Because now, if how are they then related? Yeah, if if you have that, it is like you may have a like a foreign key in on the table. Yeah. 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 You can do that in the diagram. You can put the relationship in there, but you would, if it were one to one, you wouldn't need a table for it. Yeah, exactly. Trying to think which example should we take. I think I like this one in which, okay, let us take this example where you have What is, let us look at this, this diagram where there is a relation reports to and it points now uh, the subordinate is also an employee and the superior is also an employee, a supervisor is also an employee. How would you actually write the, the table for this? Because you'll have to distinguish. So if, if there was only a single, single connective between these two, because there is no conflict, this SSN can be used as to construct the primary key for this relation. Okay, but because both of these are being used and they will be included, that is when you will make the primary key in this report. So you will have the same create table reports to and you'll go in and then the primary key would actually contain, so you will have superior SSN and subordinate SSN. And you'll have the, uh, your table created there. Okay. That is one example that was good. not a relationship in which there's a clear different differentiation of roles, you know what I mean? So you, so instead of sort of saying like, you know, so-and-so is the superior and so-and-so is the subordinate, it's more like, you know, employee A and employee B are both friends. Okay. And you want to, you want to capture that, right? I've, I've always had trouble with that because you sort of have, you have two peer, roles. peer, peer relationship. It's, it's a pretty peer relationship and it's sort of like if you, if you say A is a friend of B, uh -huh. right, that doesn't, in your queries you have to do some sort of trickery to also capture the relationship of of B is a friend of A, right? So I just sort of enter two rows, right? Or you have to do some sort of a union query where you sort of flip the things around. So I was just wondering if there's any sort of neat way to do that. Okay, let's think. So we want to actually, instead of actually having two rows, if we can somehow represent that relationship with a single row, right? That is, instead of entering two rows, friends, friend of or something like that and having the same data I mean logically it is the same data being appearing twice right, right? You, in the table then just, you, you can have a table which is friendship rather than friends which has map basically you could map relationship map table where you could say same friendship table where your two columns are who are the two people right it's, it's the same it's the same problem though right because if you sort of say you know I mean we have mm -hmm. the first field and the second field, right? And we we put in, you know, that employee A is a friend of this person, a friend of that person, a friend of this other person, or whatnot, right? And so you're like, okay, well, show me all the friends of employee A. So you write sort of just a simple query that looks up employee A's ID in the first 
column yeah, and, and finds the friends. Okay. Out, right? But then if you want to look for mm. sort of the opposite, you know, show me all the employees' friends. If you look on the first column, unless you've written everything in twice, twice you, you will miss out. Right. So what I guess what I've done in the past is I've done a union query of the two, of, of the two where I just flip the two columns around so that I have the whole shebang sort of twice and then select out of that. But it just seems it seems really inefficient. And it's just, I don't know, maybe there's no way around it. <coughs> And it becomes a little redundant to actually have for something like this a mapping table. It's it's yeah. Yeah, I mean it's sort of, <coughs> but I can't think how else to do it, right? I mean, you can sort of have one entity and another entity, and you want to have this relationship. Yeah. It's just it's a reciprocal relationship, so it becomes kind of redundant. I'll think about it. I'll see. I'll, most probably we can. Somebody might have thought about this before us and trying to think how else would you do it? <laughs> well, the assumption is that if it pays for it to be, the B is also. <laughs> 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 Okay. Okay, so basically what you want to do is I mean I have another example, but I I think what we should do is we should cover more examples in the recitation today on this. Second, I still want to know from you guys as soon as possible if you want the SQL thing. Do you want uh, afternoon off? Do you want tutorials? Or do you the to the Okay. I think that's fine. So we can use the recitation to actually go over the answers for the quiz. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah.